Okay, with that, uh, our first presenter here is Mark, Mark Teller. He's a territory manager for DataLogic Machine Vision. And as you will see, they have some very competitive solutions using smart cameras and or systems that use a central processing center where you've got distributed things. So with a dedicated controller. So Mark is going to lead us off in our presentations today, taking us through the DataLogic Machine Vision line. Welcome, Mark. Okay, thanks, Mark. Thanks everybody here in person. You made it for the opening bell here for the first presentation. I get to start things off. Thanks everybody joining online. Uh, as Mark mentioned, my name is Mark Allard. I'm the territory manager for DataLogic for the machine vision portfolio. So thanks to HE for inviting me here today to tell you a little bit about uh, our latest solutions for machine vision. Uh, so that's me, that's my contact info. No need to rush to jot that down. I've got business cards in the back. Swing by the demo area, grab a card, uh, and that'll have all my contact info. So I don't know how familiar you guys are with DataLogic as a whole. Um, so just thought I'd give just a kind of a quick introduction to who we are. So we're an Italian company. Um, handful of US uh, sales and support offices um, covering the, the full portfolio. Uh, if you know data logic, you probably know us for barcode reading. So that's kind of our bread and butter is all things barcode reading, whether it's uh, industry or logistics or retail. Uh, in Europe, we have more of a print on the manufacturing side for factory automation here in the States. We're more known for our retail solutions. Um, so if you go into supermarkets, um, I'll say the two largest probably home improvement chains, the orange guys and the blue guys, both use our handheld scanners. So when you go through the self-checkout, you're using a DataLogic uh, industrial handheld scanner to check out. Um, yep, so primarily calling on the industries that are listed there, retail, manufacturing, uh, logistics, which, you know, scan tunnels for like FedEx, Amazon, that sort of thing, uh, and also healthcare, which are point of care uh, barcode scanners. So I like to always point out, um, you know, one of the main reasons for looking at data logic for your factory automation solutions, uh, your sensing solutions, is our wide portfolio marrying technologies for factory automation, uh, but also automatic data data capture, right? So, you know, summary solutions for not only machine vision, which is my area, but also safety sensors, uh, industrial. Scanners, so those are stationary scanners that you mount kind of above a conveyor or along a manufacturing line. Uh, laser marking systems for marking parts directly. So if you want to mark a barcode, a logo, uh, other information directly on a part, we have uh, laser marking systems for, for those needs. Uh, and on the data capture side, uh, wide portfolio of handheld barcode scanners, uh, mobile computers, so for warehouse needs, say for inventory, um, and also Obviously, you see there the fixed retail scanners for point of applications. So, with so many vision vendors out there to choose from, uh, one of the primary reasons to look at data logic is that we can help kind of throughout your operation from back end to your warehouse. So, I like to just start off with this slide. I never had experience with machine vision with new audiences. so. What are we talking about when we talk about machine vision? So specifically with data logic, uh, we offer 2D vision. Um, so 2D vision, we're talking about two-dimensional images that are made up of a matrix of pixels. And with a grayscale image like you see up there, each pixel is assigned an intensity value based on what you're looking at, right? So you've got darker areas, lighter areas of the image. And with that, you know, basically, as I said, is assigned an intensity value, and or in the case of a color camera, it's assigned a different RGB value, right? So you can make determinations based on different colors. Um, based on that information, we have machine vision algorithms that can make decisions uh, based on those intensity or, or color values in the image. So in the example up here, we're looking at the tip of that needle, and you can see here, the matrix of intensity values, you can see where there's a transition. The algorithm is able to make a determination of where the tip is located. Um, and from there, you might, you might be trying to find the location of that. You might be inspecting the end of it. So we can extract a, a number of different uh, data points from that. 
So why use machine vision? So any number of good, great reasons to explore machine vision for your particular process, reducing labor costs, enabling uh, other automation, like the robots you're going to see here today, a lot of those require vision uh, for guiding them. Um, safety, removing you know, a, an employee or an operator from a dangerous location uh, through automation. Uh, reducing scrap, improving quality. But really all it comes down to is reducing cost while improving uh, the efficiency of your processes and the quality of your products. So how can data logging and HDE help? So this chart up here is, I would say, an incomplete representation of all of the factors that go into selecting a system for your application. And I put this up there just to kind of point out that vision is very application specific. And that's not to scare you off, machine vision, right? But it is to point out that, you know, one of the most common requests we get is, you know, for a budgetary quote. I'm exploring a machine vision solution. You know, okay, can you give me a budgetary? And our application engineer uh, that I work closely with, he likes to say, sure. You know, budgetary is between $8,000 and $80,000. You know, and, you know, he's joking, but, you know, really that, it, that goes to the fact that because vision is so application specific, you know, we really can't just throw a number out there based on limited information. Uh, we have to really understand your application and what you're trying to accomplish with a vision system before we can give you a quote. Otherwise, we're just throwing a number out there. So because of that, we came up with this one-page application checklist, which, you know, obviously I and, you know, your HTE rep will work closely with you uh, to fill this out, and this is just, you know, we've, we came up with a simple one-page checklist to help with collecting the critical application details that we need to specify a vision system, right? So we're trying to completely understand what it is that you're trying to do, you know, things like how are your parts moving, what type of an inspection are you doing, the smallest defect, what field of view we need to look at, how far away does the camera need to be positioned from the part, these are all critical uh, details that we need to define a vision system for an application. So from this, we're able to create a proof of concept report that includes a bill of materials with uh, not just data logic components, but also in some cases third party components. If, for example, you need a, an external light uh, or a special filter that data logic doesn't offer, we'll make a recommendation for those components. Uh, and HTE is certainly able to quote you those components as well, even if they're not data logic. Um, we'll show you a little bit about uh, our testing, what we did to come up with the solution, just to kind of prove, uh, you know, why we think it's the best solution for your application. And we'll show, in, in some cases, a picture of our test setup, showing, you know, this is the light we use, this is how far away we had a position. We might give you some options in terms of, hey, if you use this lens instead of this lens, you'll be able to move the camera a little bit further away, a little bit closer, that sort of thing. So anyway, this is kind of how we can add value uh, and to help you if you're new to machine vision, you know, as opposed to just jumping in and just buying a camera and starting to play with it. So from there, I'm going to jump into our hardware portfolio um, for machine vision a little bit and just kind of walk you through um, our list in the last year or so um, introductions to the line. So fall into three general categories. So the first one are smart vision sensors. So vision sensors, at least the ones that DataLogic offers, um, primary benefits are going to be sensor-like setup, so very easy to set up, real software to learn. Um, these guys are for people in binary applications, kind of go, no go, good, bad, very cut and dry. Right, so not a lot of um, not a lot of gray area in terms of the inspection that you're trying to do. So I'd say this is kind of your entry level vision product if you're just doing a simple application. From there, we progress into smart cameras. Here is our newest smart camera that I'll get into a little bit more. Detail. Um, so when we talk about smart cameras, we're talking about you know essentially an all-in-one solution, right? So it's obviously the camera itself, but it's also your processor. Um, you've got the option of using onboard light, so there's onboard cameras. 
Um, in this case, there's a small, there's a lens mounted inside the camera, right? They're field configurable, so you can take these apart. You can purchase different lights, different lenses if you need to configure them differently in the field for a different application. Um, so advantage there is if you have you know, a little bit more complex of an application, um, these are gonna be a lot more flexible to do wide range. So we, we see very simple applications, we see relatively complex applications covered by this kind of a device. And then uh, on the high end, we've got our vision processors. So vision processors, actually industrial Windows PCs running Windows 10 IoT. Uh, we offer them with up to eight GIGI camera ports, GIGI being just an industrial uh, standard for transmitting images over Ethernet. So you can have up to eight camera ports uh, on one processor, so up to eight cameras connected to a single unit. Um, these more come into play with you know, higher degree of application complexity um, or if multiple cameras are needed or you need a higher resolution camera uh, or speed, right? thing in up to a quad core processor. So if you need the horsepower to keep up with your application, you look at something like as opposed to a So one of the biggest benefits of the data logic vision line is that our smart cameras and our processors are both configured using our impact software suite. So it's one piece of software that you have to learn to configure basically all of our vision hardware uh, not including our vision sensors, which don't really use any software to configure. So unlike some competitors, which have you know, different software that you have to learn depending on the product that you're working with, just one software that you have to become familiar with and then you can, you're off to the races with our entire line, essentially. So diving into some specific products, I'm gonna talk about uh, kind of one product from each of those categories um, that I just mentioned. So starting with our Smart VS vision sensor, and I've got at my demo area in the back, I've got one of these, the Smart VS, and I've got uh, one of these functional as well. So please come on by and take a look. Um, so as I mentioned, this is for your kind of binary applications, go, no, go. Um, Sensor-like setup, so there's a button right on board the sensor that you use to train good and bad images. So you train a series of good and bad images. The sensor uses machine learning to essentially cook a machine vision algorithm on its tools or anything like that with a traditional machine vision system. Um, there is also a, a browser-based web application you can use to program the sensor if you'd like to see the image coming off the sensor, which is usually a good idea if you have kind of a borderline application that you just want to test out. Um, and one of the bigger things uh, of this sensor is it has a deterministic 50 millisecond response time. I mean, regardless of the application, regardless of the inspection that you're doing, it's always gonna give you a result in 50 milliseconds. So you don't need to worry about uh, process time, that's baked in. So as I mentioned, you can just train it using the button right on board the sensor. You can train up to six images total, combined good and no good. For a simple application like the cap presence apps application that you're showing up there, generally you can get away with training one good image you know, with the cap in place, one no good image, no cap, and then one long press and you're off to the races from there and the, uh, the sensor is ready to go. Um, if you get into some more, I would say, qualitative applications with a little bit more gray area, say you're trying to detect the condition where the cap is not all the way on, you might need to train or you will need to train additional images uh, and test it, but the process is the same in terms of training the images. This detail in terms of what we mean by binary applications. So some examples there, checking for the presence of a label. So presence absence, the, the classic application we're talking about here. So uh, is a label present, is it not? Uh, is a cap oriented the correct way or the incorrect way? Uh, checking for presence or absence of a cap on a bottle like we showed in the previous slide. And also printing presence. So we're not reading that printing that's shown on that can, we're just checking to see if something has been printed on the can, right? Which in a lot of what people wanna do is just make sure that something's been printed so that I can verify that my, my print is still working, right? So from the vision sensor, is gonna jump into uh, our latest smart camera, which is 
two X series. So this is our second generation of P series smart cameras. Um, so this is what I call our, our flagship smart camera now that we've, we've launched it, launched earlier this year. Uh, available in a couple of versions, just gonna run through a couple of specs here. So a um, couple of different resolutions, uh, monochrome and color versions. I always like to show this, this is a kind of a unique data logic feature. It's a feature of our, our vision cameras and our stationary barcode readers. We have this connector block on the back for connecting power and I.O. as well as ethernet. It'll rotate. So in the field, you know, sometimes you don't always know which orientation you need for your cable exit, right? So you can kind of change it on the fly. For manufacturers, you have to order it in advance. Do I want the straight exit? Do I want the 90 degree exit? Whereas with data logic, you can just change it up in the a couple of different illuminator formats we offer, 14 LED and 36 LED. So this is showing the 36 LED unit just to kind of give you an idea of the size. Um, also we have the 14 LED version out back in the demo area if you want to compare sizes. But big advantage of the 36 LED unit it may still look kind of small, but it is very powerful, available in a few different wavelengths. So it gives you pretty great area coverage and working distance coverage. So how far away the part is. Oh yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah, if you guys want to take a look. Now, uh, so is using a uh, what we call a micro lens. It's a, it's a small kind of bayonet style lens underneath the cover. Um, in the next couple of months, we're also going to be launching a C mount version. For those of you who are familiar with lenses, basically the takeaway there is that this gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of available lenses. You can go out and, and shop for lenses on your own. Greater uh, Biggest advantage is going to give you greater um, working distance coverage versus the lenses that we currently offer. So, uh, with the smart cameras as well as the vision processors, I'll talk about in here. Uh, we support the industrial protocols that you see there: Profinet, Ethernet IP, uh, Modbus, as well as TCP/IP. Uh, there's three discrete outputs available on the camera as well for. Uh, outputting your inspection results or giving indication of your inspection results, right? Okay, so the full power of impact. So as I mentioned before, impact is our software suite for the machine. And so previously with these smart cameras, and as is still the case with some other manufacturers, they were limited. Right, so they weren't able to run all of the tools that maybe the high cameras or processor systems were able to run. Uh, or they were limited in terms of the number of tools that they could run, um, or the software was limited in other ways when you use these types of devices. So with the P2X, DataLogic has made the decision to give you the full power of the impact software. There's no limitations in terms of the tools that you can use, the number of tools that you can use, uh, up until obviously you reach the, the memory limit, which um, you're gonna get, you're gonna be able to add quite a few tools before you're gonna run up against that. Um, you can design a program basically without a specific hardware platform in mind. So say I'm not sure you know, if I need a smart camera or I need a vision processor for my application, I can design a program that's going to work with, right? So you can design it maybe with the P2 in mind and then say, hey, maybe something changes about my project and I have to pivot to a vision processor. That program that I've written is gonna run on either one. So color processing is something that we've really improved upon with this latest generation smart camera. So a couple of things to talk about. So A, we have a, a brand new set of color tools that we've developed specifically to take advantage of. Um, so this is checking for, maybe I'm looking for color on a label. I'm looking at maybe paint colors just to check to see if those are within spec. Um, I might be looking for uh, a particular color. I wanna make sure that you know within a batch, I don't have any of the incorrect part fall into, uh, fall into the stream. So those types of applications for color detection. <clears throat> um, with the latest uh, version of the impact software, we're able to work within different color spaces. So when I say color spaces, those are basically ways of representing color or quantifying color, right? And what that means in terms of uh, or for practical purposes is that I'm able to look at the different components of these different color spaces and identify the one that provides the best contrast in my image. 
better contrast means my machine vision algorithm is going to have an easier time finding that feature or that part that I'm looking for, right? So it just simplifies the programming um, aspect of it. And then one quick thing, if you're a little bit more of a vision nerd, um, what we've done uh, in terms of the color processing with the new camera is that we've taken the demosaicing step, which is basically the process of turning the raw RGB image into a full color image. It's an interpolation process that has to happen before you're able to work with the full color image. That is now done onboard the camera in hardware. Previously, it was done as part of your program. It increased your processing time. Now that's taken out of the program, speeds up the processing time overall for those color applications. And I just want to talk about a couple of practical features of the camera that are going to be of interest to um, anybody in maintenance or obviously everybody here interested in, in minimizing downtime with, uh, with your production lines. So one is this 360 degree visual feedback feature, which if the opaque uh, border around the outside of the camera, kind of a frame, and that has LEDs inside that can be programmed to light up in four or five colors. You can see red, yellow, green. We can also do blue and I think uh, one other color. Basically, these can be configured to give an indication of any operating area that, you know, A is my inspection passing uh, or failing. Um, I can program, for example, you know, say yellow to indicate am I approaching any thresholds that, you know, maybe I need to be concerned about and take a look at my process um, before parts do start failing. Um, it basically just gives a, a you know quick and quick and easy to any operators nearby that you know everything's running smoothly with my vision system, um, and then if you know parts do start failing, you know I can see right away that something's going. Wrong. So it's kind of an alternative to um, a display if you're limited in terms of space, or it's a simpler application where maybe you don't need to necessarily display the live image. Another one which is pretty cool is that we've embedded an accelerometer in uh, on board the camera. So what that allows you to do is the camera is able to detect if it's been bumped or if its orientation has changed. So if comes, someone comes along and whacks it with, you know, God forbid, a forklift or something along those lines, or maybe my mount loosens up and the camera just kind of drops down, the camera is able to detect that condition. So when, when you first install the camera, basically you store the orientation, you save that on board the camera, and then if something happens and that orientation changes, the camera is able to detect that. We have a sample program available that's going to light up that bezel. It's going to blink yellow, I think, at you, just to indicate that something's off with the uh, of the camera that you need to take a look at it. Um, the number of customers that have told me or, or distribution partners that have got, had to go on site because all of a sudden vision systems stop working, the customer doesn't have any idea why, and all they had to do was walk out take a look at it, turn the camera to look at the conveyor again, and all was right in the world. Whereas if you had a feature, your operator would know right away that something wrong with the uh, position. So jumping from the P series now into our MXE series vision processors. So as I mentioned, these are for your more complex applications. I need higher speed. I need multiple cameras. I need a higher resolution camera, right? Higher resolution comes if I'm trying to find maybe those finer details or cover a wider, uh, wider field of view, right? Um, so as I mentioned, these are just industrial Windows 10 PCs. Um, we available in up to a quad-core uh, processor version. As I mentioned before, you can connect up to eight cameras to a single processor, right? So that gives you an idea of you know the power of these processors. Um, as I mentioned before. All those industrial protocols on board are supported. And I find it helpful just to kind of show kind of a typical installation, right? Because some people don't necessarily see how that fits into our vision portfolio. So the vision processor is shown here underneath the conveyor. Uh, in a lot of cases, people will install that in the control panel directly, right? Um, so what you have, on a, again, in a typical setup, you might have a camera attached to your, you know, your 8 to 20 frame above the conveyor. Because these particular cameras don't have onboard lights available with them, you need external lighting. So showing a couple of bar lights there, looking down at my box as it moves down on the conveyor. 
And in most cases with these types of systems, we have an HMI screen, right? Because this is essentially just, or not essentially, it is just a PC, right? So we've got a DVI port. I can just connect a monitor up to my DVI port on the processor. And I can design my own custom HMI screens to interface with the vision system, which I'll get to in a little bit uh, coming up here on the software side. And then just kind of a quick introduction to our vision software. So again, our software suite for vision is called Impact. Uh, so it's basically made up of three components, uh, two applications. So one is Vision Program Manager, or VPM. VPM is used to configure my vision camera, uh, set my exposure time, uh, configure my trigger, you know, things like that, and also to design my vision uh, recipe, my inspection program. Uh, the other application is called Control Panel Manager, or CPM. And as I mentioned before, that's what you use to design your own custom HMI screens for interfacing with the vision system, right? So these can be used to display a live image. In a lot of cases, customers will display a live image next to a known good image. So it's pretty clear to an operator, you know, when something's awry, my live image doesn't look anything like my known good image, so I know I have a problem with my process. Um, they can be password protected, right? So that only certain operators have access to the screen because you can make changes um, from, from the screen if you desire. Uh, you can use from the screen, you can select different vision programs depending on the product that's being run at the time because you might have, might have multiple recipes um, depending on your process. Um, so it's really powerful and it can be really customized to your specific um, process. And I do like to, to, to mention that the software is free. Anybody can go and download the software from our website. We don't license the software, we license the hardware. So when you buy a camera, it comes with a license to work with the software. But if you're just getting started, you want to play around software, you can go and download it. It has built-in emulators and sample programs. You can import your own images to work with to get started if you want. Um, and we have a series of training videos to kind of get you started working in the software um, right away. So if you wanted to go home today and take a look at the software, it's, uh, it's available for anybody to take a look at. So just briefly, what is this chart showing? This is just kind of reiterating that the functionalities available with the P2 smart camera, which is the one being passed around, and our MXE processor series are exactly the same. These levels to be concerned with, really effectively the difference between those three is just that um, the enhanced and the professional licenses add some additional tools, some more advanced tools that aren't available uh, in the base license. Um, but again, the takeaway is that I can run all of the same tools on my smart camera, as I can on my processor. And the main determining factor between those two is just gonna be the processing horsepower available to me, right? So the MX is gonna have a lot more, uh, a lot more processing power available application versus the smart camera. And then just kind of a quick snapshot of our VPN software. I've got a live demo out back that you're welcome to take a look at or those uh, watching virtually, there's gonna be a video attached to the end of this where you'll be able to see the software as well. Uh, this is just highlighting you know, pretty intuitive layout. It's a drag and drop interface with down program execution, so it's all highly intuitive. I've got these tool drawers, we call them in the lower left there. Um, we have over 100 inspection tools to choose from. You just drag a tool into your program. And then on the lower right there, I've got my setup wizard uh, that I work with to configure the tool. So pretty straightforward to get working with the software right away. And if you have experience working with vision, you know, all of the tools that you would expect, blob detection, OCR, those people. 
So just kind of a quick overview why you would look at data logic for your machine vision application. So just kind of a review of uh, some of the highlights I've talked about. So we do have some class leading algorithms specifically for uh, OCR, which stands for optical character recognition. That's reading text like lock codes and date codes, as I mentioned, and also pattern finding a lot. Uh, particularly for robot applications. So if you're using a vision system to guide a robot, you're typically looking for a pattern, which is identifying my part sitting, say I've got a part on a figure, I'm gonna train uh, the two-dimensional pattern that that part forms against my background. And based on that, I'm able to pick the location of that part and uh, send those coordinates to the robot for picking it. Uh, application support, as I mentioned, we've got the, the process in place where we help you to collect the details that we need about your application to define a vision system and provide a proof of concept uh, report in conjunction with HTE to show that um, we've taken a close look at your application and we're confident in the solution. Uh, we have flexible, powerful configuration software with the ability to create your own custom displays, so it's highly customizable, highly powerful, but also intuitive if you're just getting started with machine vision. Uh, as I've hit on multiple times during the presentation, uh, single software suite for both our smart cameras and vision processors, which really is a big advantage with data logic uh, versus some other companies which have multiple pieces of software that you have to learn depending on which hardware you're working with. And again, the complete portfolio, right? So yes, I'm here to talk about machine vision, but Data Logic has a wide array of barcode readers, both handheld and fixed mount. So we can read, you know, basically if you need to read a barcode, we've got the right solution for it. Uh, but we also have safety solutions, sensor solutions, um, and laser as well, so we can help you throughout your facility. And that's about all I had. So open it up to questions if anybody has any. Yeah, we've got just a minute or yeah. so if there is yeah. a, a question. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> if not, yes, go ahead. Yeah. How well do your cameras work with, uh, if you're looking at something that's on a reflective surface like Mylar or something? If you have a part on a reflective surface a or? Something you want to identify from the right spot on the Mylar and got the right text on it, something like that. Oh, okay. Um, so that usually comes down to lighting as opposed to the vision camera itself, right? So, you know, one uh, attack we'll take is to use a polarizing cover in a lot of cases. So a polarizing cover is gonna cut down on a lot of that glare. Uh, the trade-off of the polarizing cover is it knocks down your overall light that's reaching the camera. So when you do use a polarizer, you tend to need to really hit the area with a lot of light to make sure you're getting enough through the polarizer. Um, but that's more a, a lighting question and kind of coming up with the right lighting scenario to, to avoid that glare. To, to do your inspection. Take so. a look at your application that suggests yeah, of course. proper lighting techniques for that. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thanks. So thank you for everybody online. We've got a number of people. I just stepped out and uh, we are streaming live. So thank you Good. for everybody thank that's you. online. Thank for you guys, for everybody that's live here too. We're gonna go ahead and open up our demo. So feel free. We've got uh, a number of demonstrations going back into the robot room, up to the electronic room, and then back into the warehouse too, where we have some mobile set up in here, but you'll hear the presentation at 10 a.m. So until then, we're taking a break, and it's gonna be all about demos. Thank you very much, Mark. Great, thanks everybody.